So now I'm going to go back on, as Paul Harvey would say, to the rest of the story. So I'm going to take you through a day in the life scenario so that this is kind of as real as possible. And I'm going to use our company as an example. And in this example, what I want to kind of demonstrate is the, the, big, crev the big hole that is the gap between web analytics and CRM. So it doesn't matter really what web analytics tool you're using. You know, I've got a bunch of them up here. And then you know, on the other side, you've got CRM tools that are out there. And so I'm going to go ahead and go through it. Oh, I'm not sure what happened there uh, with the other CRM vendors. I'm sorry about that. Um, but um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a day in the life scenario. And I'm going to show you at each stage which system knows what. And hopefully this will resonate with some, with some of you as you go through this. So I've got my website. And I've got a guy who goes out and he looks for Salesforce automation. Okay. He, he's, there's paid search stuff, organic search. So he clicks on the item in red, an organic search term, and he comes to my website. So um, you don't have to, I'm going to try to navigate this for you, but if you look at it in every slide, I'm going to show you in red what's new. So here we go. Our web analytics tool knows we've got a new unique visitor. We've got a visitor. We've got someone. He's from San Francisco. Here's the keyword. So again, here's the information we're getting, and we know that they looked at a home page. So now this prospect then clicks around and he looks at a sales product view. He's looking at our product page for sales. OK, that's cool. Now this person goes out and starts looking at some demos on our website. So now this person has looked at a sales demo. He actually looked at a service demo. And he's been to our site looked at a bunch of product pages. OK? Now, from this point of view, if we just stop right here, if you look, and in this case, I'm, we happen to be using Salesforce.com as a CRM system, and I should have mentioned, in this case, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using Google Analytics. At this point, if I'm Google Analytics or my web analytics, I say to myself in movie terms, like, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Like, here, this is awesome. I got a guy who came. He's interested in Salesforce automation. He's looking at my product pages. He's looked at a couple demos, and that's awesome. You know, things are going great. But from the CRM side, you notice that CRM knows nothing. CRM is pretty much clueless, OK? So they don't even know this person's even come to the website yet. They have no idea. But let's keep going with our scenario. So now this guy comes back the next time. We got another visit. This guy's definitely a little more interested, more qualified. And now he looked at our pricing page. Like, that's cool. Like, this guy, you know, I'm really starting to like this guy if I work at Salesforce.com. So then this guy says, you know what? I'm going to fill out a free trial. Now, for the first time ever, our CRM system gets involved. And now we find out that his name is Bill Smith, and he's a CIO, and we get two really precious pieces of information. We get an email address, and we get a phone number. OK? So this is cool. OK? So now I say to myself, if I am in sales, and here's my stereotypical sales guy, because you know in marketing we love sales guys, um, and he's saying to himself, you know, what brought this guy to the website, Bill? Do I care about Bill? Is he qualified? All I know is he, I got some joker who filled out a free trial form. As far as I know, he's a tourist. Like, I got lots of hot deals I'm working on right now. You know, I, I don't have time for Bill. So the question is, if, if only like, our web analytics tool could like, talk to our salesperson or our CRM system and think about what it would say if you could take a system and it could talk. Our Google Analytics, in this case, would say, listen, Bill is interested in two products, dude. Okay, He's been here multiple times. He's looked at our demos. He's viewed our pricing. He's, this guy wants to buy our product. And he's sitting there begging us to take his money. Okay, But does our CRM system know that? Does our sales guy know that? Unfortunately not. It's not easy for most clients out there. But the way I look at it, if I'm a sales guy, this is like taking candy from a baby. You know, This guy's basically, he's a layup. It's easy. So let's assume, and I'm going to make a big assumption, that this lead, that this guy doesn't slip through the cracks. Most of the time, as I've talked to clients, he might have slipped through the cracks there. But let's assume that a sales guy calls him and he says, hey, you know what? They actually have about 500 employees, and it's about a $25,000 deal, and I'm going to stick it at this stage. And then you, know, and then you start doing your normal CRM stuff. So at this point, what does your normal salesperson do? You know, and not to be too mean, but you know, they're, you you want them to do ROI justification, you know, qualify this lead, all this stuff. 
Um, in reality, what our sales guy is going to probably do is he's probably going to take him out to dinner, you know, give him a nice big steak. He's probably going to do as best as he can to get this guy drunk, and then try to get him to sign on the dotted line. Um, but just kidding, you know. I mean, obviously our salespeople have a place. But let's assume that you know he, he schmoozes him, he gets all that going. But let's assume that this guy now comes back, and we actually do get him to sign on the dotted line. Ended up being about a twenty-seven thousand dollar deal. Moves to stage ten. Okay. So, the question I have for you in this situation, and I don't know how often this type of a scenario would help would happen for you, is our sales guy's happy. Okay, he just made a commission. But the question I would have is, was this deal won because we were awesome? You know, we had our systems integrated and all of our data was passed freely back and forth and we were really sales and marketing ninjas? Or was it pure luck? You know, was it lucky that we just happened to have the right, you know, this sales guy happened to find this one lead and pick it up, call him, and, and everything worked out great? And what could we have done to make this you know, a better situation. So when you do a post-mortem on this typical day in the life between sales and marketing, what I've seen at a lot of clients is that when it comes to how did someone get to us, our marketing source, are they interested in our products, you know, which products do they really like, and, and how qualified are they? Actually, web analytics tools are really good at that. We are tracking all these clicks, assuming, you know, they don't do the dreaded cookie deletion thing. Um, but when it, term, when it comes to knowing the personal information and actually finding out if that person who filled out a form on a B2B site ever became a profitable client, they're not really good at that. We don't really know that. And on the flip side, um, our CRM systems are really inept when it comes to the first stage. They actually don't care about all of that behavior that all of us spend so much time caring about. Pathing, clicks, you know, watching videos. But they're really good once someone tells us who they are at closing the deal. So that's why we want to try to bring these two things together. So I'm going to split this into two parts. One is how could our lives be better? How could we have improved the situation? First, by passing CRM data into web analytics tools. Okay. So in, in our scenario, we look at traffic drivers. We look at how people came to the site. And in this scenario that we went through, we had someone who came from the phrase Salesforce automation. Now, most of us in the B2B world would say, how many visits do we get? and how many form completions did we get? But what I'm showing here is something that we're doing internally where we have actually pumped in how many qualified leads, how many qualified opportunities, and what was the actual revenue or pipeline that took place after someone came to our website. And we can tie it down to any traffic driver. In this case, we're looking at an SEO keyword. Now, if you remember in the scenario we talked about, our SEO manager would really not have any way before you do something like this to know how much money his SEO keyword led to. Now, he may know for an email, he may know for paid search because you could put a tracking code, but this is something that you just can't do unless you can tie these two things together. And the way I look at this is it's really important to go as far downstream as possible, and I'll, I'll kind of use a simple example here. Let's assume you're in the marketing department and you say to yourself, I'm using Site Catalyst, I finally got everything implemented, everything's good, I've got my visits, my form completion, and here's my conversion rate. If you're a logical person, you would look at this scenario and say, hey, I should spend more money in email. Okay, it seems to be logical, that's where things are working. However, if you then merge in data like we're doing, where you take salesforce.com data and you pass it in and you pass in qualified leads, you could actually see that email is not where it's at. Email is actually low. You really want to be spending money on paid search because you've gone a little further down. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't get paid for form completions. I get paid for qualified leads and revenue. And as close as you can get to that, the better. So in this case, paid search is where it's at. So you should run to the rooftops and say, we need to spend more money in paid search. But guess what? If you actually pull in the ultimate metric, which is revenue, now you can see that actually paid search isn't where it's at. You really should be spending more of your time and effort on SEO. So you can see that if you don't pull in offline data, what we call offline data, but your CRM data, your metrics that really matter to your business, all of your web analysis can be wrong. And you could actually be walking around with a loaded gun and, and shooting at the wrong stuff. So another thing I've heard a lot of people talk about is multi-visit attribution. And there's no one solution for this, but one of the things I thought I'd share that we're doing is we actually have kind of solved this in a way, is we look at all the visits that people come to our website, and we group them, and we stack them. 
how many times this person's been here three times, four times, the first time they came from SEO, the second time they came from SEM, and we can actually tie revenue to that by pumping in our offline data because we know what they came from in the visit when they completed the form and we could follow that form completion through to our CRM system. And lastly, I've been showing you a lot of traffic driver reports, but that, that's not the limit. You could use any report in your web analytics tool and pump this offline data in. Here, I'm just looking at a visit number report, and I could have pulled up 100 different reports. So it's not just limited to your traffic driver reports. So usually when I show people this, I kind of get this face. You know, what, what are you talking about, Willis? You know, how do you do that? Like that, I've, if, I, if everyone could do that, you know, why aren't they doing that? And it's not easy. But I, and I'm not going to have all the time to go through all the details of how I've done this. But I actually, after this conference, I'm going to be releasing some blog posts that go into more detail. But I do want to, at a high level, kind of walk you through the process that I went through at Salesforce.com to do this. So I took my website visitors, and I took people that completed a form. And once they complete a form, then I have a unique ID for that form completion. And I can pass that into my web analytics tool. Now at the same time, I have a cookie ID or a visitor ID for website visitors, and I can pass that into my CRM system. And it gets a little tricky because you might have to have more than one cookie ID since people delete cookies in your CRM system. But if you got a good CRM system, salesforce.com, um, then you can actually do that. You can build a related list for that. So once you have this glue, this primary key between these two systems, really the world is your oyster. And what we've done is we've passed leads, opportunities, and revenue from our CRM system into our web analytics tool. Okay? But that's not it. You can actually do some really cool other things I mentioned. But this is, for those who are a little techie, this is the actual file I use to pump leads, opportunities, and revenue into our system. You notice that we have this ID here that is the ID of the person filling out the form, and then later I pump in, it could be a week later, a month later, I pump in um, how many leads were added, how many leads were removed, how much revenue was added, and every day as our salespeople change their deals and they start saying, oop, this is a $50,000 deal, no, it's a $40,000 deal, our web analytics tool is updated so we could at any time see the latest and greatest information. So, that's how you pass the actual raw metrics. But the other thing I want to talk about is metadata. And this is really cool. As I mentioned in the golf example, I had this cool metadata, which was golf handicap. But if you have a good salesforce.com or CRM implementation, you have hundreds of data points about these people. So once you have this connection, think about what you could import into your web analytics tool to slice and dice your web behavior by. So just as an example, what we're doing, is if you look at the web ID of people, I have an industry in salesforce.com, I have the number of employees, I can group the number of employees, I have lifetime value. And I could even bucket each of these using same classifications if you're using Omniturb and you know, Unica I'm sure has a similar thing and all the other tools. So once you do that, imagine watching your web analytics reports, here are my form views and form completions by industry. Now, I never found out their industry. I never asked them their industry on the website, because the more questions you ask on a website, you know, the more people are going to bolt and take off. But I can still slice and dice it, because I've got that connection. Number of employees. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to segment and watch how people are navigating your website based on how many employees they have? Wouldn't it be cool to be able to see your order value? And so again, I can literally take any field from my CRM system and pump it in and watch my web data by that.